You are now listening to Chakras and Shotguns. Welcome to Chakras and Shotguns, the podcast that guides you on your journey of spiritual development and personal preparedness. I'm Jen, a former lawyer, now yoga instructor, wellness entrepreneur, tarot card reader. Mm, All the jobs, baby. Call me Jen Jobs. (laughs) And I'm Mick, a marketer, Reiki master, and prepper. Have you guys ever thought about having a superpower? Mm. I know you have. We some X-Men nerds over here, so we're always thinking about it. Yes. Well... I was partial to Nightcrawler, so teleportation would definitely be my thing. Mm. And we're going to get into that a little bit today. Yeah. It's actually not that far-fetched of an idea. We're going to talk today about the idea of astral projection and how you can have some fun and travel just using consciousness. Mm. But before we get into that, are you signed up for our mailing list? Last episode, Mick gave some Akashic Records reading spots out for a very discounted rate. Mm. They filled up super fast. They were hot. Shout out to my boo. <laughs> and, but we still have people who wanted to know like how they can get on the regular rate, how they can you know sign up with Mick, and they will find out that information if they're signed up for our mailing list. So go ahead and sign up. It's in the show notes, as it always is. You don't want to miss out. All right. Well, we're going to begin as we always do with a little bit of breathwork meditation to put us into a mindful place. All right. Go ahead and find a comfortable seat. You can always lie down and let's get started. For this practice today, I want you to rest your hands somewhere on your body face up. Say more receptive, receiving hand gesture that we use in meditation versus face down when I want us to ground. Flicker your eyes closed and let's start to connect with our breath. Inhale deeply in through your nose, expanding your belly, and then exhale that breath out through your mouth. Let's do another. Inhale through your nose. And then gently exhale that breath out of your mouth. Let's do one more together. Inhale through your nose. And seal your lips closed and exhale your last breath out through your nose. Allow yourself to start breathing normally, matching the lengths of your inhales to your exhales. And only focus on your breath and the sound of my voice. As distracting thoughts come in, as they are wont to do, just redirect your attention back to your breath, back to the practice. to imagine yourself in a empty void. For me to help me visualize this, I imagine myself in outer space without any stars, without any light. Do you feel weightless? And as you start to bring that void to mind, can you imagine your body being a part of that void? And 
imagining yourself as nothing, as no thing, as just awareness. as you float in blank, empty space. You might feel sensations in your physical body. Your breath may feel shorter. As long as you feel safe and comfortable, allow yourself to experience this unique space. Take a deep inhale in through your nose. And exhale your breath out through your mouth. Let's do another one together. Deep inhale in through your nose. And exhale or even lion's breath that breath out through your mouth. Start to bring your awareness back into your physical body. Wiggling your fingers, your toes, your nose, your ears. And when you're ready, start to flicker your eyes open. And allow yourself to come back into the room. All right. That was dope, Jen. I saw you with the bars, the nothing, no thing. I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> See you over here. Wordplay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the main topic, guys. What exactly is astral projection? Mm. Now, I'll give you the official definition, right? It is a state of consciousness that exists when the, the you can operate independently from the physical body and traverse the astral plane. Now... How I see that is basically your soul being able to get up and walk away for a little bit, Mm -hmm. go check some things out and and come back. Right. And so when we were looking into astral projection, this other term out of body experience is coming up. Right. That's another term that people use in this space. And what I found is that astral projection is actually like the intentional leaving of your body. It's like you're sitting down, practicing it, trying to leave. And out of body experience is like, oopsie poopsie. I didn't left my body. I'm looking down. You know, kind of situation. So, yeah, they're kind of used interchangeably in some spaces, but they're actually quite different. Okay. It sounds like our kids. You did it on purpose. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was on accident. <laughs> 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 the astral plane. Mm. That's where you're going when you astral project, that is. So, it has a lot of mysterious definitions, but basically think of it as a spirit realm, something that defies time and space. And when we're thinking about time and space, that's really like what we live, you know, every day, right? Like I'm at this address at this time. I'm not going to give you my address, but I'm at this address at this time. (laughs) And that's how we can locate where we are within 3D, right? So the astral realm defies that. Maybe it sits on top of it. Maybe it's Mm -hmm. next to it. However you would like to conceptualize it. I'm not picky. I'm not either. I like to think about it how the ancestral plane was shown in Black Panther. It was like purple and it was like the trees and like the animals or like the panthers and they could transform into like his dad or the other previous Black Panthers. That's how I like to look at it. In my okay. mind, you know. All the stars are falling. Okay. 
If you would like some other pop cultural references, go ahead, go ahead. Mick has given one. If you've ever watched the series Charmed, I don't, I mean, I'm sure it came up in the, the reboot, but you know, I'm on the original. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Prue, she used to just like fall out, pass out places and then like pop up at the club. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my first understanding of astral projection, which mm-hmm. was false. But <laughs> yeah. I don't think that was like, of course it wasn't really that accurate. Right. Yeah. Because, baby, I would be in the bed and go to work. <laughs> I'm not going to commute. Yeah. I'm just going to be in the bed. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Also, if you liked Doctor Strange, there was astral projection there, which I felt was a little closer to mm-hmm. the definition. Agreed, agreed. Especially, like, the way um, his... The Supreme Sorcerer? Yeah. Like, knock people out their body? What's the actress's name? I don't I know. I forgot. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Let's not dilly dally. Yes. So there's actual projection there. There's a couple of other references I had to. Oh, the series that was very promising. Spoiler. It's not a spoiler. The end left mm. something to be desired. Behind her eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That had a whole astral projection. Yeah, we talked about major that before. Thing. Yeah, I, I like that, that show. That ending was trash. But anyways, <laughs> so... We did talk back before in our CIA episode, I think it was episode 85, we yes. talked about remote viewing. Yes. And so there are elements of astral projection there too, right? Mm-hmm. How, you know, obviously the CIA didn't invent astral projecting. It goes back a lot further. Right. But it was something that we kind of explored and touched on a little bit in kind of some of their files. Yeah. yeah. This will come up again a little bit later too, but I love that it's astral projection. That's what it's called. But mm-hmm. the CIA was like, baby, give it a corporate name. <laughs> it's remote viewing, darling. <laughs> We're just looking at this remotely. It's work yeah, from home. It's surveillance. It's big brother. You work know? from home surveillance. Yeah. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were like, take all this heavy shit out of here. You gotta get on your Zoom. <laughs> Not get on your Zoom. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, but going back into like some of the like first mentions of it, we've talked about other things that fall in this kind of same realm. But the idea of astral projection, it goes back to ancient yogic and Hindu texts. Mm-hmm. And they talk about going into different mental states of consciousness and being able to move your soul into the astral plane. Then you have Yoga Nidra. Oh, yeah. That's you, a favorite. That's your thing. It's a favorite of mine. It's <laughs> amazing. I like to sleep. And Yoga Nidra is sleep for the yogis. And it's... <laughs> chef's kiss but that being in that state can trigger some of these like sensations and feelings of astral projection et cetera, et cetera. so that one is a goodie a goodie i would even throw in there in sound baths i just had a sound bath that i did with uh, another sound healer on friday and we had some people who like really got into a deep state of relaxation and they mm. kind of feel themselves like kind of pulsating out of their body a little bit. So, yeah. Interessante. Mm-hmm. I was watching the kids. Wish I could have been there. <laughs> Anywho, moving on to the science of it all. So there isn't, of course, surprise, surprise, surprise. There isn't a lot of objective science around astral projection, which means that science hasn't objectively, you know, what were we talking about? The order of, what's it called? Oh, the scientific method. Yeah, that. I was like, the order of operations, that's math. math. Anyways, there isn't like objective proof that astral projection exists or that it works or whatever. But there is a ton of subjective and anecdotal evidence, both from the perspective of the person who experienced it, as well as like other people, right? So we've talked about this department at the University of Virginia, UVA. It's called the Department of Perceptual Studies. Again, a corporate mm-hmm. perceptual <laughs> studies. And every time I write it down, I want to say paranormal and they say, eh, eh. Nope. It's perceptual. How do you perceive? We perceive. Mm-hmm. Everyone Myers perceives. Myers-Briggs. That's part of the Myers-Briggs. The P. Perceiving. Oh. You know? Look, look at, at that. that. Mm-hmm. The more you know. <laughs> The Department of Perceptual Studies, like they go around and they take anecdotes of people. They do studies. I think they did a study. It might have been astral projection. It might have been out of body experience. And there's a lot of overlap there. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of talk about them kind of jumbled together a little bit right here. But I do remember reading about a study where they put some random objects on a shelf up high and they covered it up and then either they trigger somehow this out of body experience astral projection and they were like yeah girl it was a pipe 
a thimble, a doorknob. I don't know. I'm making up. Thimble. I'm I'm making up random objects. I'm just thinking about Monopoly <laughs> <I> clue <laughs> with the candlestick. That's funny. And they were like, "Well, there's no way unless yeah. their body rose like Got out up. of their physical, like the energetic came out of the physical. There's no way that they would know." Mm-hmm what those objects were so very interesting stuff Mm -hmm. we'll put a link in the show notes if you want to read more about their work personally i am fascinated by uva's department of perceptual studies Mm so i'm gonna put this put this out there you know manifestation you gotta you gotta name it and claim it so if anybody got a hookup at uva know somebody in the perceptual studies i want to go i want to visit i want to get a tour i want to talk to some people so i'm just putting it out there shoot us an email dm get me on the guest list and you know there is a really good restaurant in Charlottesville. Look at you. That has amazing. Was it gnocchi or bolognese? Okay. I also would like to visit. <laughs> she just want to eat. It's wine country out there. I would. I would love to go. It's mm-hmm, cute. Mm-hmm, it's cute. Mm-hmm. I've been there before. It's cute. Why don't we talk about some of our experiences <laughs> that we've had with astral projections that I think about old restaurants you've been to? Okay, so I have had a couple, and one of them was while dreaming, which. We're going to do an episode on dreams. And I feel like there's also overlap there, mm-hmm. too. There is, there is. And that can be a little tricky. But this one, I think I would put more in the astral projection bucket than the lucid dreaming bucket. Okay. Just because lucid dreaming is about controlling your dream mm-hmm. and astral projection is more about traveling. Yes. Okay. So when Megan and I were first hearing about, this is kind of... At the point of our spiritual journey where we were just like finding out a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. We were just like, like <laughs> Alice in Wonderland and just like, just like went through the rabbit hole. Like, what the hell is going on here? And like, oh, tell me about that. Yeah. Oh, tell me about yeah. that. And I feel like this is the era we're in. We did Akasha Gregor's last episode yes. and now we're on astral projection, which was like, that was the thing of the week. <laughs> and I wanted to travel. It was like, oh, you can travel. You can go anywhere you want to go yeah. in your dreams. And I, it was during the pandemic and I wanted to go back to my favorite bar in Paris. And that sounds very bourgeoisie. Très bourgeoisie. You got a favorite bar in Paris. Just own it, man. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to go. You wanted to go. And so all I did in that instance, so this is not the true like method. I mm-hmm. just really just set an intention. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to remember my dreams. I want to go to the syndicate. If you're in Paris, go to the syndicate. It's phenomenal. And that night in my dream, I was walking down the street and it's like vivid. I was walking down the street and I saw it and it looked like it was closed Mm -hmm. and particularly that it was under construction. I had not looked up this place since the last time we had had gone. Like, I didn't know what was going on. And I looked it up and it said that it was closed for construction. I remember. You like woke up the next morning like, Mick, I was there. I saw it. I'm looking it up right now. We went to the Google Maps and it was like, currently under construction. You cannot visit right now. Yeah. That's crazy. So there was that one. Okay. And that one was cool. And I think I was like, okay, whatever. The second story that i had Mm -hmm. and and that's probably like my second like real concrete Mm -hmm. feeling of astral projection also an accident i didn't set out with the intention to astral project but i did set out with the intention to get into a specific meditative state Mm -hmm. and so bim bam boom yeah i ended up astral projecting but i was meditating one night Mick had gone upstairs. You were like getting ready for bed or whatever. And I was like, I'm going to meditate. I was in the bed. Yeah. So I'm meditating. And sometimes when I meditate, I can go into this space. And that's kind of what I was trying to trigger in the breath work. And I was sitting there meditating and kind of got into this deep meditative state. And I was very like, I'm not really manifesting. I'm not trying to ask for anything. I'm just trying to be. I'm just trying to experience and observe. And so as I was in this meditative state and I kind of go in and out and it feels like I'm like falling asleep and I'm going in and out. At one point, I felt myself on the side, on mixed side of the bed. Upstairs. Upstairs. And I'm downstairs on the couch, but I felt like I was standing on Mick's side of the bed next to Mick and Mick was watching a show on his iPad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just observing, which also, here's a note. That's like key 
to meditation period i think like we get distracted we get all these thoughts and oh i gotta go to the grocery store or oh what did that have to say to me last week and you're really just supposed to be observing observing sensations thoughts everything that comes in and you're just there to observe which is which takes i feel like takes practice of like turning off your mind and not being an active thinker 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 so i end up coming out of the meditation i'm like oh okay that was cool that was a nice meditation Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to go to bed. So I go upstairs. I get ready for bed. And I get in bed and I was like, can I ask you a weird question? And (laughs) you were like, yeah. And I was like, did you feel me on your left side? No, that's not. That's actually not what you said. Oh, what did I say? You said, did you feel me in the room? Okay. Okay. And I said, yeah. And I was very confused. I thought maybe you had snuck up here and I felt you on the left side which is odd because you sleep on the right side of me. So I was like, had this moment of confusion of like, Mm. she can't possibly be in the room right now. Like what's going on? But then like I looked around and just kind of dismissed it and went back to my show because I was, I was watching Suits. I I was catching back up. So I went back to Suits. We won't make a judgment about that, but. I mean, look, I mean, Harvey Specter was trying to get somebody out some stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So I got back to it. But let's focus, let's focus on the (laughs) fact that. (laughs) And thank you for clarifying because I misremembered that. That I did not tell you what side Mm -mm. I was on. And you were like, uh, yeah, I did. I remember what I remember is whenever I asked you, you were like, yeah, I did feel you up here. And I thought that was really fucking weird. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was Mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, okay. Because I think I asked for rejected. I was like, yeah, you definitely did. And that is called. We came to find out later from the UVA Department of Perceptual Studies, who will be inviting us to come visit and will be taking us to that uh, that restaurant. It is called bilocation or reciprocal astral projection, mm-hmm. which basically means that you're astral projecting and someone else perceives you. Mm-hmm. So it would have been one thing if I was just like floating through the room like a ghoul, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. you know, knocking, yeah. sh- knocking shit over on your nice thing. Yeah. But like you felt, yeah, me. I felt, and like I know what your energy feels like, and so it was just like I felt mm. that energy, and I was like, wait, what you mean you know what my energy feel like? Oh, girl, I could feel your energy from two thousand miles away. Whatever they say in that song, that song, I can feel your energy from some kind of miles away. Mm. No, it's a Kendrick Lamar song. Oh, yeah, okay. I know it be going over your head sometimes when I get into the the lyrics. Yeah, yeah you know I don't exactly. know lyrics. <laughs> Anyway, so let's talk about me real quick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, what's funny is that, like, Jen and I, we have, like, almost, like, these complementary experiences where, like, my experiences are different, but, like, somehow overlap a little bit, and hers are very different than mine. Because, like, I don't have an experience like that where, like, I am mm-hmm. in a physical space, and I can take myself to another physical location or even with, like, a different part of the same physical lo- location. Like, it's nowhere near like, near that for me. I've never had that experience but like i have gone into a deep meditative space and i've been transported to like different time periods or like different civilizations and like weird other planets and stuff like i'll I'll go like into the akashic records right we talked about that two episodes ago where like i just stumbled into the akashic records and so it's like that feels like astral projection too because it's like i'm not in this space but i'm not like able to i want to go like watch a game or something and not actually have, have, to, have to be there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I want that power, you know what I'm I, too, will be at the Super Bowl. <laughs> but I'm in ancient Egypt over here, like, in a whole different temple or something, you know? But I'm in ancient Egypt. I'm over here going upstairs. He going over yonder. I'm saying, but, like, what's cool about church is, like, you can actually verify. You can be like, oh, yeah, like, he was. That's fair. I'm like, I don't know if that really happened. I got to go find a, I don't know, a tablet with some hieroglyphics to try to figure out if that was where it was. He's not talking about an iPad. Okay. <laughs> I do want to say something about like astral traveling when you are sleeping though, because this is something that has come up for me. Like I was having a, it was an astrological chart reading mm-hmm. and they were talking about like one of the placements on my chart showed that I am a traveler when I sleep. And the astrologer was like, yo, you might want to like say a couple Psalms, like to make sure you're protected when you're traveling or maybe ask your spirit guys to like, Hey, like, maybe not tonight. Like, let's put the passport away and get some sleep. Because you got a lot going on. I've heard that actually from multiple, like, astrologers and 
psychics and whatnot. Yeah. So I'm probably going places I'm asleep and just don't know. Yeah, that's actually a really, really helpful tip because I feel like when we first heard about this, like astral projection and lucid dreaming, we were like, yeah, let's do it. And I think we were kind of doing it every night. And then it was like, I'm tired. And then you realize you're not getting any rest. Yeah. Like there are parts of you that are, are moving around mm -hmm. and you need to set intentions for rest. I think I'm going to start to actually reincorporate that into my like nightly practice of mm -hmm. setting intentions for when I go to sleep. Sometimes it's, I want to remember my dreams. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, y'all leave me alone. Just let me sleep, baby. I don't want to go nowhere. I'm grounded yeah. like them Boeing yeah. 737 Maxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's actually a really, really good tip for people. And I think I'm actually going to reincorporate that. I kind of find on my spiritual journey that I'll have a practice on something and then I'll have to reincorporate it later. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to do that again. And it would be setting intentions for when I go to sleep because I felt like when we first started hearing about astral projection and lucid dreaming, we were like, oh, yeah, we want to do that. It's shiny and cool. And we were doing that every night. And then we were like, I am not resting. My body is moving. It's trying to go to the syndicate. It's trying to do too much. It needs to take a beat, take a breather. So setting an intention that might look like I want to remember my dreams. If you're really trying to like start a dream journal yeah. and remember your dreams and, and what's going on, you know, what kind of nuggets you might be missing out on in your sleep, but also taking the time to being like, Hey y'all, I want to rest. Yeah. And in y'all is like the spirit team, God, the universe, like I'm setting the intention that I'm getting deep restful sleep tonight. All right. So why would someone want to even go out there and do some Astral projection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are some claims out there that it says it can help with anxiety or fear, or you can even kind of get some spiritual information while you're out there doing your astral travels. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten any information that you can think of? That my favorite bar was closed. I mean, I meant spiritual. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all what I found out. Mick was up there watching that trash show. <laughs> that is not accurate. As a former lawyer, y'all heard it at the top of the episode. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's my rant on suits. <laughs> so you got the fun of of going out and traveling. I think that's probably the other, other end of the spectrum. You just get to, you know, go out and travel to the universe, check some things out, maybe pop them up on Bali right quick, see what's going on over there. Yeah. I think that if I made it something that I was getting a lot more practice in and you can end up finding yourself, like, I think... My two experiences were me exploring spaces that I already knew mm -hmm. and your experiences were experiencing other times mm -hmm. and maybe timelines or past lives, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that bucket mm -hmm. is like, I'm in the neighborhood, like this is my bus stop, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you're over here experiencing like ancient egypt and mm -hmm. i feel like that might be a bucket where you might get a little bit more fair fair new information <laughs> yes yes that's fair that's fair <laughs> so for those of you that want to try out astral projection what do you do mm -hmm. so we're gonna give you a couple of methods we're gonna break down my method even though it sounds like i kind of did it on accident but like i can do it yeah you can do it so yeah you can find a lot of tips and tricks there's whole subreddits on this and Let's get into, I'm going to call this Jen's method, I guess. Okay. This, okay. this Jen's method. So it's really, we're trying to get into a deep meditative state. For me, I need eye mask. I need noise canceling headphones. I need darkness. I can't have a lot of noise. I'll get too distracted. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get into a deep meditative state and really I kick off with the meditation that we did at the beginning of the show where we did, where we were trying to get into this blank void. Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you're familiar with his work, he calls it the quantum field. And, and his theory is like, this is the space of nothing from which like everything comes. And like, it's this like quantum physics. It sounds like the ether, which we just talked about. Like it's all kind of the same thing to me. A little bit, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's where you can 
manifest from where you can pull in timelines that you want. It's just this, but it's, it's almost like a blank slate. Yeah. And I like it because it kind of strips everything away yeah. and gets you to a deeper place of meditation mm. versus like, if you're trying to like, sometimes we can go into meditation and make it work. Yeah. And we're like, okay, this is what I want to manifest. And this is what I want. And I'm <laughs> visualizing this. And it's like, just be and just observe. Yeah. And yeah. when you start to energetically and mentally put yourself in that space where you're nothing and you're mm. no thing, you start to detach yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from the physical body. Okay. So you're kind of starting to let that go a little bit. I'm not saying like you just going to fly away, but you, you stop thinking so much in the physical. No, it's fair. So you can do this seated. I remember I was sitting down when I popped up upstairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can do it lying on your back. So what I always say, so kind of kick off with like that meditation that we did at the beginning of the episode. And like, that's kind of your base. And then from there, you might start to feel sensations. So like when I kind of go into that space, my breathing tends to get a little more shallow, which make sure you're not freaking out. Don't send yourself into a panic attack. Okay. But it's just, it's more like it's lighter. It's up in the top half of my lungs where you might, it might start to feel just like you're not going all the way deep into your belly, Mm. but it's not like short of breath or hyperventilating. That's not what it is. And you start, you might even start like finding yourself like holding your breath and like releasing it and it almost becomes automatic. It's just not something that you're thinking about. And then you just want to keep focusing on the sensations. Like, remember, you're the observer. So it's like, oh, wow. Like, that's how I'm, that's how we're breathing. Okay. And not even like adding a thought or a value to it. Just being like, hmm, I see that. Yeah. And just like note it. Yeah. And so then as you start to feel those sensations, you might start to feel vibrations. You might start to feel like you're spinning. I've felt that before. And that's my, that might be where you're like, that's enough. That's too much. (laughs) Back it up. Open my eyes. Yeah. But I would encourage you to kind of just go with it, continue to observe, maybe even encourage it to go faster and then just start to see what you perceive. Sure. And so like this method is kind of like, I feel like if you have to project, you have to project. If you don't, you don't. And it's kind of getting more into that type of space. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got another method that we found. We have not tried this method. Right. Because we are parents of two small children, mm-hmm. five and three. Mm-hmm. And they be ready to go mm-hmm. as, soon as, as soon as the sun comes up. Mm-hmm. So this method is messing with your sleep a little bit. So I wouldn't recommend this method if you have any type of sleep disorder, though, any type of insomnia or sleepwalking. Don't 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 do this. Don't do this. But I'll, I'll run through it real quick. So basically what you're going to do is let's say, for example, you get eight hours of, of sleep. Normally, you're going to set an alarm to wake you up after six hours. OK, you want to wake up five to ten minutes, walk around, go to the bathroom, then go back to the bed. Lay flat on your back and you're going to set the intention. I will wake up soon and astral project. Okay. Repeat that intention in your head until you fall back asleep. Now, when you wake up next, you got to stay still. Don't move. Okay. Keep your eyes closed and imagine that you're rocking in a hammock from side to side, but not with your actual body. Just imagine your your soul your your energy moving from from side to side right you want to stay as still as possible physically they say that i've not done this again they say that you will start to feel like you're vibrating or spinning similar to jen's method just kind of go with it and see if you can feel yourself starting to kind of roll out of bed or start to spin a little bit right this is where you might freak out as as jen said in in her method but you got to kind of go with it and just allow yourself to stay still. And then you might start to feel yourself kind of lifting if you kind of push yourself a little bit, right? You can kind of feel that like ability to, to move your energy up out of your physical body a little bit. You want to do that gently, very gently. Keep your eyes closed again, staying still and physically still, but start to make your way kind of towards your bedroom door, or maybe to your closet or to different areas of your bedroom. And yeah, see if you can open some things. Play mm-hmm. with some things. Mm-hmm. And then you're actually projecting. You're there, baby. Yeah. That thread said to 
keeping keeping your eyes closed like eventually your vision will start to your astral vision mm-hmm. will start to wake up because i think the thinking is if you're like i'm opening my eyes you're going to be back in your bed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now a humorous note on that thread they were like what if you're just crawling around in your house with your eyes closed <laughs> <laughs> Again, haven't tried it because the last thing I want to do is bump into something when my kids sleep and wake them up on accident. Child. So we are gonna stick to the awake, just going upstairs and watching me on my iPad watching Suits. You know? Can you imagine if like it was a Saturday morning and you wanted me to do something with the kid? I'm like, oh, I'm tired. You know, I I, I set my alarm and I woke up. <laughs> I was trying to ask for Jake. You been like, come on, get make this break, make these kids some breakfast right quick. I'm like, you make the toast. <laughs> I was trying to see something. <laughs> I was trying to be seeing something. <laughs> nosy. You're calling me nosy. You are nosy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, guys. That is the show. Happy astral projecting. Hope you enjoyed it and give those techniques some, some tries. DM us. Let us know how it goes. Yes. I want to know what happens. Yes. Be careful. Friendly reminder. Sign up for the mailing list. Do not forget... Lots of goodies, lots of information in there. You mm-hmm. don't want to miss out. You'll know when I do my next Akashic Records readings. So mm-hmm. definitely do that. All right, guys. If you're loving the show, please subscribe and give us five stars wherever you listen. Namaste. Namaste.